Hey folks and welcome back to Shaggy's Car Shop. On tonight's episode, uh, we're going to be working on the Volkswagen again. Um, I think tonight we're going to be trying to rip the doors off of this thing. So if you want to see how to remove doors off of a uh, mid-70s Volkswagen Beetle, please follow along. Without any further ado, let's get to it. So for removing door door hinges on these older Volkswagens. So there's one, two, three screws up top and one, two, three screws on bottom. Now these on the inside down your A-pillar, um, they had little caps on them. I removed the caps. I kept those. Uh, they were, again, this is kind of a budget build, so I'll save whatever I can. I mean, a lot of this rubber stuff. Ooh, actually, this stuff ain't too bad. I guess it. Oh, never mind. That one's kind of crusty. It's protected by the door a little bit. Um, again, I've been soaking the outsides of these uh, from back up down inside the, the hood or the trunk, whatever you want to call it, uh, with some PB blasters. So hopefully they'll move. Um, one problem is my window. It doesn't want to go down. Uh, my my initial thing was is I was going to pull out, loosen them all up, and pull out the bottom three and two of the top ones, and then just kind of support this door with my shoulder. Um, but I can't really get this window to move, so that'll be another video when we rip into this door. But I guess. What we can do is go get a jack, support the bottom of the door, so that way we do the same thing with these top screws, only the door is supported right down out on the end on a jack stand, and then get this thing out of here. All right, let me go grab a few tools, and we'll see if we can get these screws to budge. All right, folks, is what I have is a manual impact. Uh, so what I have read with all of these screws over here is they're very stubborn. Now, I think they are number four, which I don't have a number four bit. I have a number three bit, so hopefully I don't strip any of these guys out. Um, but rather than using my little impact uh, drill or an impact wrench, uh, the thing with this is when you smack this, with a hammer back here it puts all that pressure in and turns so hopefully you can get them broke loose and then back them out with a screwdriver so the way this little thing works is you push in you hold it this way you push in and it's got a little I don't know how well you all can see it but it's got a little R and a little left or a little L so righty tighty lefty loosey so you push in Kick it all the way over to the loosen. Then it's got a little adapter. Goes on there like that. So you can hold your bit. And then your bit itself. Now you can use these for, um, you know, this is a half inch drive. So you can use them for a impact socket if you get a real stuck bolt. Something like that. Um, but everything I've read, try and get one of these and hopefully you will be able to get them out without stripping anything out. All right, let me go grab my, uh, let me go grab my safety glasses when you're definitely when you're using an impact tool that shoots any, uh, metal fragments off of here. You don't want to get those in your eyes. So, uh, let me go grab those quick and we'll be right back with you. All right. Don't 
Let's see if we can see out here. I guess it did a little bit. That one come. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I loosened them up with that other tool. Ooh. I almost forgot. I need to head down and grab my uh my jack. Almost dropped this door. Hang on, I'll be right back with you. All right. We have the door supported right out in this region. Let's. Sorry about the lighting. I know it's not very good, but. Ooh. All right. Well, those are stubborn. Guess we go back to this. Smack it around a little bit. This is what I'm doing with this, folks is trying to get them to loosen up. I am going loosening, tightening, loosening, tightening, back and forth, hopefully to break that rust that's down in there. All right, let's try the impact, or impact driver again. Hey, hey. Got it. again with these um, they seem to be pretty pretty tight in there so just be careful you don't want to strip these screws out um, I know that manual impact driver don't seem like it's doing much but as you saw before down here I couldn't even move them with my little impact driver here and after I hit them a few times just broke the rust up enough to where I could get them out of there. All right. All right. Now let's hopefully not drop this door on myself. I knew I forgot something. See that little pin in it? Yeah, don't forget to remove that. There's a little C-clip on the bottom of it. And you gotta pop that off and punch that pin out. I was supposed to do that before, or remember to do that before I try to pull the door off. So, I'm gonna run a screw back in the top and then we're gonna get that out. All right, folks, let's try to get my flashlight. So I have that little C-clip station or position right there, but I need a screwdriver on both sides of it. I gotta use my mouth to hold flashlight. So give me one sec.
Huh. I do not know where it went. That's all right. All right. Now we should be able to lift this door up and out of here. Again, folks, don't forget that little pin. Oh, well, there we go, forgetting things again. This one's just a screw, though. All right. Third time's the charm. Boom. Just like that. All right, folks. There we go. One door off, one to go. It's a little more cramped on the other side, but um, yeah, it's a little crunchy up there in that end of that rocker, but we'll get it out. Uh, so one thing, if you guys are doing this, um, I had to go get some baggies. You can see right there my pile of screws from that front fender right over here I have the same thing on the other side and now I got my six screws in that little door pin I don't know where that c-clip went I'll dig for it but I doubt I'll find it um, but anyway take and get you some ziplock baggies whatever and right on them where your bolts came from and either wrap it on the part or tape it to the part something like that my fender bolts there are going to get taped to each fender according to which fender they came off of when i do the frunk or hood whatever that thing is called um, they'll get taped to it these door ones will get taped to the door so on and so on that way if you're like me with my firebird um and it's a 20-year project you're not looking for nuts and bolts as bad. Try and be a little organized. I know that's weird coming from me. But let's move on to the other side. All right. Let's learn from our mistakes from the last side. All right. Get that little clip out of there. Perfect. Well, it disappeared as well. Hmm. Oh, well. Boom. Pull that little pin out of there. Now we're good to go. Hopefully we can get this one off in one go instead of three like the other side. Okay. Let me get my safety glasses. BFH or little FH. I guess it's not that big. And my manual impact driver. Set it on to loosen. And Sweet. Those three came out. Um, the ones I'm more worried about are these three right here. 
Uh, it's a lot harder to get PB Blaster down in there. I think I got him, but who knows. So let's reposition you guys. Start with this one. Give me one second to get my panel stand set up. So when I get this door off, we can set it over there. All right. One. do not want to come out well all right folks I'll bring you back here in a minute I'm gonna see what I can find to get these guys out of there uh, I may just have to use my manual impact for a while or see if I can't get them out soak them down with some more PB blaster I don't know I don't want to end up drilling these Again, I'm trying to save what parts I can. So, I'll be right back with you. All right, folks. After about 10 or 15 minutes, using my manual impact going tight and loose and tight and loose and tight and loose, I um, was finally able to get them free with the little impact driver. So, let me get this top one out. And this door should slip right on out of here. Hopefully. Hey. All right. All right, folks, that's it for tonight's video. Um, hope you guys saw on how I removed the doors from these A-pillars. Again, if you can, get up in the front here and soak them down with uh, PB Blaster, WD-40, penetrating oil, whatever you can get down in there, especially this, the bottom one there. Um, top ones, they actually came out pretty easy. I was able to get those a lot easier. Them bottom ones they are a pain to get to but do what you can to get them out and again get one of those manual impact drivers um, that was the savior of the day and again if you're using impact tools whether it's a hammer and a punch or anything like that please use your safety glasses uh, you don't want to get take out your eyeball or anything like that because then you gotta you know, work with one eye. And it's already hard enough to see with my crappy lighting. Um, let's see, some of the further videos. Uh, now that I got the doors off this thing, it's going to air out a lot better. Um, yeah, this thing is kind of ripe. I, I can't quite put my, my finger on the smell in there, but it's uh, interesting. Let's just say that. Um, but it's gonna air out. So my whole shop is gonna smell like the inside of this rust bug, but that's all right. Um, 
let's see i think my next video i'm gonna pull off the uh the hood 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 and uh frunk i think i'm just gonna start calling it frunk uh hood and frunk and then uh get some penetrating oil in along these but those are uh my rear fenders are gonna have to wait while that penetrating oil sits for about a week and in between that i'm gonna start gutting this interior so i can get it out to the trash can like this headliner and what's left of the carpet and um and i gotta pull these uh rear panels off so i can get to the rest of these bolts to soak them down um let's see other than that oh after that maybe pulling some glass out of here we'll uh we'll have a little adventure again uh the windshield is already cracked and shot i don't want glass all over my shop so we'll try and take it out a little nice we won't uh take a hammer to it but these uh rear quarter glasses and that back glass are in excellent conditions and uh original to this car from everything i can read or see on the uh on the windows so i'm trying to keep those i mean the, the seals are shot we'll just agree on that but pull that glass out help it air out a little more maybe throw some interior out of that basically we're trying to strip this down so we can uh, jack it up and soak all those bottom bolts and lift this body off this uh, chassis torque tube that ought to be fun figuring out how to do that but lift this body off set the body down over somewhere else and so i can get fixing on that uh no updates on the firebird talked to the guy it's been there a couple of weeks now um he's been busy with some insurance work so he said hopefully he'll be able to get to it here in a week or two or well get to it start on it um and i'm supposed to go over there one of these days and talk about paint and things of that nature so as soon as I can get over there and uh, get some footage of my Firebird, I'll uh, give you guys a little sneak peek of what it looks like as it's getting prettied up. But until then, uh, I guess we'll, uh, or I guess until the next video, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.